Last time I made a B-Stars video, I asked if you guys wanted a video on Lewis. But after seeing episode 11, I've decided to just combine my thoughts on him and everything else I've seen so far as an unscripted commentary. And as a heads up, as of right now, this will be my last video on B-Stars. But if there is enough support with likes or comments, when I come back from my break in January, I will do a proper send-off video for B-Stars. But with that being said, it's the second to last day of the 12 Days of Anime, and it's Christmas Eve. So everyone watching right now, please have a terrific holiday season. I hope you spend it with your family and you get what you want. And as well, spoilers for episodes 1 through 11. Let's talk about Beastars. So I guess the best way to start off this video is the romance... It's more like a love triangle. I don't even want to call it that. It's very complicated. Uh, the, the, sir, the, the three of Lagoshi, Lewis, and Haru. Now this is pretty interesting actually because... Uh, Haru, so far, has been described by a lot of characters in this anime as a slut, which there's, you know, I always find that funny because there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But um, Haru is someone who, he, she does sleep around a, quite a bit, and it turns out she's been sleeping with Lewis, who, they're in this sort of relationship that, I don't even want to call it a romantic relationship, really, because it feels, I don't know, it just feels like a really half-assed, like, friends with benefits thing, but they're not even really friends because Lewis is like hey don't tell anybody that we're actually together because that would actually be bad for me because you're kind of like you know people look down on you and stuff like that really not cool stuff honestly in my opinion there's also in play this group of, it's it's more like the mafia for this show. It's the Shishigumi, I believe is what they're called. And they're like a group of lions. Um, and they actually do capture Haru because they're going to eat her. And the mayor is also a lion. And apparently he's gotten like a lot of like uh, plastic surgery done uh, and, and stuff like that to make sure that he comes off as friendly. But he uh, doesn't he doesn't exactly like these lions, but to address the fact would be to hurt his race because a lot of people actually see the lions as untrustworthy and uh, scrupulous and, and stuff like that. They don't they don't see the lions in really good light. So he doesn't want to, you know, deal with this. He just wants to sweep all this under the rug with Haru. And he basically tells Lewis that like, hey, you know, we know where you come from because Lewis actually came from, he, he's like product number four. He was going to be eaten by these lions. So he got out of that situation when, it, when a, uh, a fellow, uh, uh, one from his race, uh, another deer came and bought uh, Lewis so that he could live and survive. So, you know, He's the mayor is like, hey, you know what? Like, we'll get rid of your past. No one will ever figure out about your past. But you just keep this shut. You keep your mouth shut about this. Don't don't say anything, and you'll be all right. And of course, Lewis does that because Lewis is Lewis, and that's he's a very complicated character in the sense that he's kind of a coward. <laughs> he's he's you know he talks a big game. He talks about you know to Lagoshi like, hey, stand up, be a wolf, be a, in other words like be a man. You know, uh, through a lot of the beginning of these episodes and. So Suddenly, when it comes time for, for Lewis to act, Lewis says, you know, uh, well, I guess maybe not. And because of that, Lagoshi, like, you know, starts fighting Lewis. But Lagoshi actually goes off to save Haru, which is... And this leads to, like, a really cool scene where Lagoshi and the panda break Haru out of this, uh, this, this, uh, this Shishigumi facility. Which I really, I, I just loved this scene so much because it had a lot of great action in it. And it's another example of Orange being really great with animation, being really... Uh, they're, they're on the forefront, the precipice of technology when it comes to this stuff. They're very, very good at choreography. Some of the things didn't add up, of course. I think in these episodes, I, I as especially the later episodes of Beastars, I think that you can definitely notice some of the limitations of some of the motion capture, but not necessarily the CGI itself. The CGI is basically perfect. It's choppy in certain areas, of course, but I would say more of the issue is some of the motion cap stuff. It definitely feels like they only had like two suits two mocap suits and they had to like swap swap them out for each take and they like you know uh took took footage of the of different things happening and then pasted them together and put them in the same scene to make it seem like there's a bunch of people in the same room when it was really just two at a time taking turns recording um their parts it definitely really seemed like that at times which is totally fine because you know it's still really good but it's it's one of those things like you definitely will notice it if you have not really even a keen eye but if you just you know if you're a casual observer of these things and if you know if you're someone who's nitpicky about cgi you will absolutely notice these things but it's not that bad it's not like a really terrible thing but 
Lugoshi, this is like Lugoshi's like true, um, I don't know, the awakening of his character of what he's really supposed to be. Because up until this point, Lugoshi is this guy who's very shy. Um, he's not very proud. He's not a very proud wolf. He's not, you know, he's, I used in my last video an example of, of him fighting his instincts as like a drug user. And they, and at, I think I'm pretty much absolutely right about that because actually in these episodes, since the, the first three episodes that I saw of Beastars and did that video, they got a hundred thousand views on. They, they do, there is this black market where they do sell basically, you know, animals to eat. Um, already cut up animals and stuff like that. Uh, there's this there's this old guy. Uh, I believe he's an elephant, maybe? I, I can't remember, but he's, you know, he's like, he's got a price tag on each of his finger, and you can just bite into that and eat it if you want. And it's very, you know, the way they do it is so fantastic. They have like this, um, I don't know what it is, this aura of this mist or whatever that goes in, in, around um, Lagoshi's face, around, around, you know, into his nose, and you can see it enter his nose and into his head, and you can see the effect it has on him it's almost intoxicating the way they make it look which is really it's it's so awesome how well that aspect is done because you can almost feel Lagoshi's just just desire to, to bite into into this person's flesh and and just and just you know indulge himself but he's someone who Lagoshi he doesn't want that side to define him he doesn't he doesn't care for that side but since he is who he is it will always be there with him much like a drug addict who's just getting off drugs or hers you know and, and maybe struggling right now with the drugs you know they they want another fix right I mean you have to please you know your your lizard brain uh, and when you're that addicted and so that's kind of what Lagoshi is going through is, is something like that, where he's trying to defi fight his desires to do this thing that gives him uh, great joy and pleasure, but he knows, he knows that afterwards, you know, he'll have a guilty conscience because he's, he's, he's killed somebody, and he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to do that, and that's like a big, actually, a part of Haru and Lagoshi's kind of dynamic is that Haru is this pure white, you know, uh, uh, rabbit. Uh, she's, she's, she's very, she's very small compared to Lagoshi, uh, and Lagoshi is still growing. Like, he, he grows some in this in this anime uh and Lagoshi the thing between their relationship is that it shouldn't work a lot of people bring it up that you know a, a wolf with a bunny like are like is he gonna try to eat her or something like that is that what's going on here and she's just getting fooled or whatever but it's much more genuine Lagoshi just doesn't want to eat her you know Lagoshi actually really likes Haru which I I love I love that they it's such a great way to explain explore these kind of topics of romance in such a different way because you know this is not the same thing as what we've seen in with romance and every other you know anime or whatever and sure we still do have the issues of you know this being a 12 episode anime like their romance progressed pretty fast in fact uh i think in one episode it's like they it's like will they won't they and then the next episode it's like Lagoshi is like i love her i love her to death <laughs> You know, like one of those things, like, and that's, that's, you know, feelings, I, I think, you know, for some people, it's sure, of course, you know, but I think, you know, to, but for, I think for the general public, you know, the general people, the regular people, you know, romance for many people is something that takes place over time feelings have to develop that way because you can't you, you got to get to know the person right that's just the way things work Lagoshi and Haru's relationship progresses really fast in that sense um but at the same time I'm actually perfectly okay with it because the for one these are anthropomorphized characters so I mean you know it, it in that sense maybe you could make an argument you know animals maybe do fall in love that quickly I don't know it just depends on you know what the circumstances are but you know since they're anthropomorphized I, I would like to you know say that they're basically just people with you know animal tendencies and they look like animals that's that's kind of the way that I've been approaching it so it is what it is right um it's very hard to kind of describe where I, where I'm coming from here but you know their relationship in that sense is you know it's 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 very dynamic it's very unique even though the relationship progresses really fastly it's it's something that is believable and something that i really enjoy i i just love i love seeing haru and Lagoshi on screen together i think and i think that's very important with a romance there's a lot of romances and i've said this time and time again i've beaten it to death so many anime ha 
have this thing going on where not only is the romance progress super fastly, but one, it's cringeworthy, and two, the two characters don't even have chemistry. It's just something that the writer or the director or whoever the, is in charge of it wants these two characters to be together because that's, you know, that's the image they want to sell. Not because they focused on making a human relationship right? Uh, whereas Haru and Lagoshi do feel a little bit more human than you would think, even though they are animals. And I just think that, yeah, there's, there's some couple steps they skipped here, but I just, I really think this is one of the, the, the better relationships in terms of, you know, it making sense. Like, I, I think coming from that perspective, it just makes the most sense. It's really good. But I think the person who really sells these two together and really kind of speeds that process up a little bit is Lewis. Now, I, I did say, like I said at the beginning of the video, that I would talk about Lewis, and I'm here to talk about Lewis because Lewis is so complex and interesting. He's this guy who went up to Lagoshi and was like, hey, you're a proud wolf. You gotta be proud, man. You gotta be big. You gotta be strong. You gotta be tough. You gotta show me your fangs, man. You gotta do this. You gotta you gotta do this and that, and you gotta you gotta be worthy. And then suddenly, when, when, when the time comes around for him to act, for him to do something, it's Lagoshi doing it and not him. It's crazy. Like, it really is. It's such... It, this Lewis character is so fascinating just because we learn about his backstory, about how he was going to be... Uh, he was a product. He was going to be eaten by these Shishigumi or whatever. And he was saved. And not only was he saved, he was then... They were in an elevator and his, his new father let him out and was only gave him a knife and said, you're going to survive this floor. And there's a bunch of animals trying to eat him. And what Lewis instead did was he tried to commit suicide. But he was then saved. It was more like a test. And I found that really interesting for Lewis's character because, you know, he even brings it up himself like, you would rather commit suicide than, than kill somebody or harm somebody. And I find that there's just something so compelling about that scene that I really, really love. But then you have the whole thing with, you know, at the end of episode 11, um, seemingly Lewis coming back actually with a gun and, and shooting and killing a bunch of these shishigumis uh, and these, these lions and seemingly him dying at the end of course it's you know deus ex machina so he's probably not gonna die but i i think in this instance he may he may he may be dead because i feel like his character his whole character has been this this you know person who he's very popular in school he comes off as this perfect uh, you know this perfect deer this perfect guy who can can do no wrong he's he's um i don't know he's 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 that kind of character and he doesn't have much left I think, to tell for his story because, yeah, you know, Lewis is a, a really important character in the series, but his, you know, his redeeming qualities, uh, or, well, his story has been pretty much completed, I think, at this point. We saw him do the play, which he broke his leg in, uh, and then we saw him come back to where he was, you know, years prior as deemed as a product to be eaten and basically, you know, get I don't know, sort of a little bit of revenge on that, and then we see him possibly die. I think this would be a perfect exit spot for Lewis's character because, you know, as well he did he did something he shouldn't have done, and that's you know you know throw Haru under the bus and leave Haru out there to die because he was gonna leave her to like he was going to for sure let her die. If if it wasn't for Lagoshi showing up with with Panda, you know she would have been eaten by now, and so Lewis's you know. To make up for that, him dying is is the ultimate, you know, is the ultimate uh, receipt, so to speak. So I think it's it's Lewis is definitely one of my favorite supporting characters in this show. Probably my favorite supporting character, just because he's so he's so unique, he's so compelling, and he's so layered and complicated that I think he adds so much, so, so much to this series, more than you would expect from a character like him, I think. But so far, I've been absolutely compelled by Beastars, and I can't wait to see episode 12, I can't wait to see the final episode, but with that being said, I think it's time to end this video here. This is pretty much all I wanted to say about Beastars at this point, so... Once again, if you guys want to see me cover Beastars one last time, whether it be episode 12 or a full-fledged review, give me a like, and if you, you know, if you don't want to give me a like for some reason, you can comment down below that you want it, or you can do both. I really don't mind. Actually, that actually really helps me either way, so, you know, give me a like if you just want to help me out. Comment if you just want to help me out in general. Uh, I think you can also dislike. I think disliking works as well. But I, I'm really loving Beastars, and, uh... 
I'm really glad I actually gave this show a shot <laughs> because it's really good. It's really, really good. And thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for getting me to 100,000 views on my last Beastars video. Of course, it's not there quite yet, but by, you know, by the time, you know, this hits January, that video will likely be at 100,000 views. That is a major accomplishment to me. If we can get this video to like 100,000 views again, oh, oh man, I would love that so much. But of course, you know, the odds of that happening lightning striking twice not exactly possible in the this youtube landscape so that's fine either way thank you guys thank you guys so much for this so much for supporting me so much for watching these beastars videos and if you subscribe me through beastars and as well you know it's the 12 days of anime so go out there check out a new creator go to the twitter 12 days of anime scroll through the feed see something you like click on it watch their video leave a like leave a comment telling them you know that they're they made a good video if they did and if they didn't give them some constructive criticism give them the whole sandwich you know the whole sandwich uh, approach as they call it in psychology. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, comment below what are your thoughts on Beastars, and just know that I have a Patreon page where on the $1 tier and above, you get access to literally everything on my Patreon. That's pretty cool. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye